Dah sejari orang ni dekat.
ਸ਼ਾਇਦ ਨਾ ਹੋਵੇ My name is Krzysztof Penjasi. I work in the Finnish Institute for Educational Research and I'm the founder of Experience Workshop STEAM Network. STEAM means the integration between science, technology, engineering, arts and mathematics in education. We have organized various med art education events and interactive exhibitions, workshops, seminars and training all over in Europe, Asia, Africa and America. Over the years, several tens of thousands of people participated in our events. Experience Workshops International STEAM Network and community of hundreds of active members like teachers of various subjects, artists, scholars, artisans and toy makers. Experience Workshop experiments with various educational approaches to allow learning mathematics through the arts and to make art with mathematics. We aim to involve the children teachers and families into a vibrant and creative dialogue between the mathematical and artistic way of looking at our world. Experience Workshop's primary research interests involve, but not limited, to STEM and STEAM education. Inquiry-based, cooperative, playful, and experience-oriented mathematics education. Connecting problem-solving processes in science and art education connecting hands-on activities and digital modeling in mathematics, science, art and design education, science and art connections in learning, phenomenon-based learning and collaborative teaching, inter, cross and transdisciplinary management and transcurricular leadership in education. When I was only five, I thought the world turned around the playground. In my little mind, I didn't know the things happen under the ground. When the children play with the toys, I try to make sound from the noise. Experience Workshop Movement conducts online and offline trainings, publishing various kinds of printed and online resources for teachers, parents and students. Books, apps, science and art albums, teacher resources and scientific articles. Experience Workshop is running an international traveling exhibition of mathematical art, which included in Experience Workshop online and offline events. The collection includes artworks, scientific modeling tools, math art puzzles, and other spectacular objects. Experience Workshop is running an
Welcome, everybody. Do you hear me? Okay, thank you. My name is Krzysztof Fenyvesi, and I'm really glad uh, to be able uh, to host uh, this amazing event with several participants from all around the world. We have registrations from over 10 countries uh, and it was just growing until the last minute, so I'm not even familiar with the, with the latest numbers. And this is a great opportunity to celebrate together another success in the STEAM world. Yoon Hyung Kim received uh, the prize uh, from uh, the Korean uh, Mathematical uh, Society. And actually, this is the uh, this gives us uh, the opportunity uh, to uh, come uh, together. And uh, he uh, received uh, this uh, prize for his achievements in uh, STEAM education. Uh, Yoon Hyun Kim is a teacher in uh, Korea in a girls' school, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm correct. And uh, he's a very innovative mathematics teacher and using several hands-on tools and experimental and experience-oriented approaches uh, in his work. And I think this occasion is not only uh, to celebrate this wonderful prize, which uh, only uh, 10 uh, teachers uh, received along uh, with uh, Yon Hong Kim, but also that's an opportunity to learn uh, from his practice and start the dialogue uh, on uh, these innovative uh, practices. So let us start uh, with congratulatory messages, uh, words of congratulations. We have a very uh, honorable uh, group of uh, people, STEAM pioneers came to congratulate you, uh, Mr. Hyun, Hyun Kim. So, it will be my pleasure to ask first uh, Mr. Hogul Park, the inventor of 4D frame, the inventor of a tool which uh, you've been really frequently using uh, to reflect uh, on, your, on your prize and uh, say uh, some words of congratulations. Welcome everybody. I will tell you the session program afterwards, the congratulatory messages. So the floor is for Mr. Hogul Park, inventor of 4D Frame. Again, 4D 수리학 창의 연구소의 박호골 소장입니다. 이번 특별 세미나를 통해 김진영 선생님을 여러분께 소개할 수 있게 되어 매우 영광이고 기쁘게 생각을 합니다. 
먼저 김지영 선생님의 2020 대한민국 수학교육상 수상을 진심으로 축하를 드립니다. 그간의 교육 현장에서 김 선생님의 뿌리신 땀과 눈물이 이런 기한 결과로 이어지게 된것 같습니다. 김진현 선생님은 지오지브라와 포디프레임을 실제 수업에 적용하여 아주 의미 있는 성과를 만들어낸 유명한 선생님이십니다. 열정과 사명감으로 학생들에게 원래 배운 것을 지오지브라와 포디프레임을 성실히 노력하고 계십니다. 대부분은 지오지브라와 포디프레임을 활용한 새로운 사교육 사회를 경험하고자 이 강연에 참여해 주실 거라고 생각을 합니다. 이 강연을 통해 많은 것들을 얻어 가시기 바라고 그것들을 여러분이 속해 있는 교육 현장에서 더 발전시켜 주시기를 기대합니다. 감사합니다. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Park, uh, for the uh, congratulatory uh, message. And it's my pleasure uh, to ask uh, Professor Seo Lin Kei Paik uh, from the Korea National University of Education uh, to also uh, say uh, some words uh, for uh, Yan Hyun Kim for this occasion. Thank you very much. Distinguished participants, I am Professor Song Hae Baek, Head of Convergence Education Research Institute in Korea National University of Education. I am very happy that the teacher Jun Hyun Kim's special online seminar is held. I am deeply moved by the educational achievements of teacher Jun Hyun Kim since his work is consistent with the value of education pursued by the, the education research, education, uh, Convergence Education Research Institute. I think very meaningfully the creation of this seminar to share his remarkable educational achievements with others. Uh, for the future education in uh, the post-corona era, we should stress three points. First, maintaining a connection with the students. Second, maintaining a connection with the fellow educators. Third, learning for everyone. In addition, in order to meet these points, we must make the following efforts. First, education can succeed only when teachers make and maintain a personal connection with their class. Second, education gives teachers a range of tools to share lesson plans, ideas, and practice both with their colleagues and with teachers in other schools, colleges, or universities. In other words, education can be only effective within teachers' collaboration. Similarly, as you know, maintaining a connection with fellow educators is vital in convergence education too. Third, the corona pandemic discloses the educational inequalities that minority groups cannot access to digital education resources. Again, this needs teamwork. Learning for everyone is an extraordinary challenge in online education. Every teacher, parent, educational policymakers should work together to resolve the problems. I expect today that the teacher Jun Hyun Kim's seminar make international cooperation field. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. So I would like to ask Professor Joat Lavica from the Johannes Kepler University in Linz from Austria uh, to also congratulate uh, our prize winner. Thank you. Good morning or good afternoon uh, for you. I'm very happy to uh, congratulate you, uh, Kim, for the, in this award. And uh, I think we met in, in Korea, so it's, uh, it's very nice. And then I know his, his work, it, it's, uh, it's really uh, amazing. And then I'm very happy to, uh, to, to be here and, and congratulate. And, and it would be amazing to, to continue this collaboration with um, the, our uh, Korean colleagues and all over the world. So 
for many years we have been working together uh, as a team, we uh, present in, in different concept conferences, Ars Electronica, in the GeoGebra conferences, Bridges, and then we, we were giving lots of talks in uh, Israel, New York, Taiwan, South Africa, and then so on. So hopefully uh, today's presenter will be able to, to, to come and then give some talks in, in uh, our um, work as well. In, uh, in all over the world. So uh, really nice collaboration, uh, really nice uh, uh, to be here and, um, and congratulations for this award. And then looking forward to meet, uh, meeting you again. And, um, and then hopefully you will be able to present in our university and in our conferences as well. And then continue this uh, very fruitful collaboration between 4D Frame GeoGebra and, and, and experience workshop. Very nice to meet you. Thank you, Christoph, for, uh, for um, um, uh, coordinating the, the, the event. And of course, thank you, Hogul Park, for the invitation. Thank you. Bye bye. Look forward. Uh, for the technical difficulties, but though I'm uh, one of the hosts of the event but not uh, technically so it uh, always takes a little time uh, while i can uh, unmute uh, myself so uh, thank you uh, for these uh, wonderful uh, congratulatory uh, talks uh, and before uh, jan uh, hyung uh, kim uh, could uh, start his presentation let me mention that uh, we are very grateful uh, for uh, for the frame um, for initiating uh, this uh, global discussion on uh, STEAM and uh, started to organize uh, these global events uh, together with the Korean uh, National University of Education uh, and also uh, with our partnership uh, from Experience Workshop and many other institutions uh, who've been also uh, represented um, in, the, in, the, in the event now. So uh, I think this is a very important uh, occasion and opportunity uh, to start uh, the dialogue uh, on these uh, topics. And uh, during the uh, congratulatory talks, uh, it also gave time uh, to everybody to join. And as when I see uh, the participants uh, list, I'm really happy to see uh, more than um, 50 uh, persons online at the moment, and I'm sure that many more uh, will watch uh, the recording and uh, streaming. But we have participants in addition to uh, Korea uh, from uh, Sweden, of course, uh, where Nordic 4D Frame is located. And we have participants uh, from uh, Romania, uh, from South Africa, from Spain, uh, from uh, Japan, uh, and um, many, many other countries. Indonesia, I, I see uh, many friends, many, many contacts from uh, Indonesia and, and many other uh, places around the world. So uh, this really a proof uh, that we have a, a global uh, discussion uh, going on. And now I don't want to take uh, more time and we can keep the schedule. And I would like to give the floor uh, to Jan Hyung Kim to introduce us uh, his uh, STEAM practices, those experiences, uh, what uh, were uh, led uh, to uh, this wonderful award uh, he, he just received. And in the next uh, one hour and 15 minutes, roughly, uh, we will uh, hear uh, Yun Hyun Kim's uh, talk, and there will be an opportunity uh, for uh, questions and comments afterwards. We already received uh, some very exciting uh, questions, but I hope that uh, you will also interact live uh, after uh, Yun Hyun Kim uh, talk. So the floor is yours, uh, Mr. Yun Hyun Kim. Congratulations. Uh, do you hear me and can you see it? Okay. Uh, before I start my presentation, uh, I'd like to thank everyone who inspired me about STEAM. Hello everyone, my name is Jun Hyung Kim. 
I teach math at a high school in Korea. I'm honored to share my story with you. I like STEAM class because STEAM class is vivid. I hope my presentation will be helpful to you. I will give you the presentation in the following order. First, why do we need STEAM? Second, designing with GeoGebra and building with 4D frame. Third, appropriate technology camp 2020. And then making a large geodesic dome. Then making 10 meter tall, 12 meter tall walk of water. Then making a catapult. And then making a water cleaning boat. Lastly, time to wrap up. Why do we need STEAM? I don't think students can improve their critical thinking if they study only for college entrance exams. But through STEAM class, I firmly believe that we can enhance our students' academic performance in math. So at first, I tried to design with GeoGebra and build with 4D frame. It means connecting digital and analog and observing many principles of physics in daily life. In order to build some figure with 4D frame, we have to design just using dots and lines on GeoGebra. However, it is very difficult to draw such a torus using the icons on GeoGebra. So, it is much better to use sequence commands. Sequence commands simplify complex steps. When you enter a command like this, GeoGebra display five dots. Applying this, we can make a torus in the following order. A torus can be complicate. Uh, a torus can be complete like this. Uh, GeoGebra measures the length of each line segment, so you can use simple proportions to make a torus of any size. Uh, these are the figures I designed with GeoGebra. You can make a water drop in the same way as the torus. It looks like an egg. Uh, it can be made in the same way. It is a waka water. Uh, I forgot to tell you, I, I didn't do this. It is one of the structure that my students made. I will tell you about this later. You can also make a geodesic dome. It looks very complicated, but it is also possible. You can try a climb bottle in the same way as I did. You can create dynamic movements like a catapult. Sorry. Movements of a wing can be made in the same way. So how can we make a torus without GeoGebra? This regular decagon is the cross section of a torus. 
based on this, we, you can find the length of each segment of the torus. I prepared all 40 frame units based on my blueprint and I put them together in order. In this way, you can see a connection of mathematics, computers, software, and hardware. Based on these experiences, I have held appropriate technology camps three times so far. The objective of the campus is to build waka waters and collect water from the air to solve a water shortage. A few days before the first camp started, I, I happened to see dew farming in a mountain nearby. So I was sure that I could collect enough dew. Would there be a lot of water as I expected? Flip learning was used to, to make my students understand the crucial principles of each subject. The students watched these videos and participated in this camp. The videos did not contain much information. Instead, they had to find solutions through discussions. I got the materials the students asked for. Basic tools include 40 frame, thin metal wire, mat and aluminum foil, that and so on. Uh, the students used the GeoGebra to design Waka waters in their desired shapes. And they considered many barriers, uh, uh, variables for their experiments. Some students decided to make a cactus shaped Waka water. And others made the two same size and same shape Waka waters, but put different types of net around their waka waters. One was made of plastic string and the other was made of fishing line. These students are designing a waka water in the shape they want to make using GeoGebra. They are putting the waka waters together using 40 frames according to their plans. This video shows how the project is progressing in more detail. Uh, these students made the largest waka water. 
later, I will tell you more about how deeply they thought and explored while, this, uh, while participating. The shape of this rock of water is creative. All of the students who participated in the, in the experiment made rock of waters with different shapes. These tools were actually used by the students involved in this project. According to their plans, the students picked the tools they wanted and took them as if they were shopping. This table shows the natural conditions on the day when we carried out the experiment. As you can see, it was a tropical night. It means that the weather was very hot and humid. These students used the final to increase the humidity inside the Waka water. These students made their own net using thin wire. They thought that dew would form or better on the uh, on the wire. Uh, these students thought that they would gather well on leaves, so they took a lot of leaves and hung them on their waka water. Mm, these students made balls with aluminum foil and put in in the waka water. They thought that the aluminum foil would have a lot of dew. Let's take a look at a video clip. You can see what they are doing. This student is placing their waka water around the, an artificial lake at school to increase humidity. She fixed the, the structure to the ground with a fishing line to prevent it from falling over. Uh, watching this video, you can see how much fun they are having in the camp. These students are putting their waka water under a large tree. These are the photos of the waka waters they put at school. Uh, what do you think was the result of the experiment? As you might expect, we couldn't collect dew because it was really hot on that day. Many people may say that we failed, but I don't think this is a failure. From these experiences, my students learned uh, that plans and outcomes could be different, and they also learned what was required to get over uh, outcomes they wanted from the experiment. Mm -hmm. 
The process of analyzing the result is uh, very important. As you can see in this video, students realize it and learn a lot from the process of analyzing the results. They made good use of principles they learned in science class to analyze their results. They are seriously pro preoccupied uh, with analyzing the results. Now they are presenting the exper experiment results and suggesting an alternative plan. Um, after our first challenge was over, uh, some of students were very disappointed because they were unable to collect due. They asked me to give, give the, to give them another opportunity to try again when the weather got colder. And I gladly accepted their offer. So we decided to try again. All the students who had participated joined the second camp again. I did not force them to try again, but it was amazing that all the students participated again. I think that's because they had a lot of fun from the last camp. Mm, the place where we held our second camp was pretty cold. It is close to where I live. Uh, as you can see, there is a stream nearby. Yeah, this is a stream. Therefore, it is very cold at night. This table shows the current natural conditions on experiment day. As you can see, the experiment day was a little cold, but the wind blew very hard. I, I was worried that it would be evaporated by the wind even if we got dew. As we did in the last camp, we prepared the, the experimental tools and gave some ex explanations related to the experiment to the participants. The students made experiment plans. They reflected in their plans uh, what they had learned from the, from the last camp. Students are designing the uh, desired shapes of Waka water using GeoGebra. And they are assembling according to their own designs. However, during the camp, it suddenly started to rain. Uh, we didn't know what to do. When it rains, the amount of dew cannot be accurately measured. So we measured the precipita uh, precipitation. Uh, the exact amount of dew was, uh, was calculated based on this. We made the Waka water until late, until late at night. And after they were complete, we placed them near the stream. And we went to the site at dawn to see if there was really dew. Was there really dew there? To our disappointment, there was no dew there. There were only traces of dew. It might have been evaporated by the wind because the wind blew really hot. We started analyzing the results again. And these uh, students are uh, presenting their findings. It was exciting and info informative, informative as well. 
the students were very disappointed with the fact that the, uh, they failed again. I thought it was totally over this time. However, something interesting happened. Several students are preparing another experiment for themselves. They said they would put up a uh, walk of water somewhere around the school to watch it closely. They were enjoying the experiment itself. They found the best place, placed the waka water there, and experimented for about a week. And finally, they succeeded in uh, succeeded in, uh, collecting a small amount of dew. However, it wasn't enough to solve uh, the problem of drinking water shortage. So we started to think what environmental conditions would be required to collect a large amount of dew. So I prepared another camp. The goal is this camp was to collect a large amount of dew. So I, pro I provided dry ice and boiling water to the students. This is because I wanted to collect a large amount of dew using the sudden temperature difference. Students measured uh, temperature and humidity using digital thermal hygrometer. Thermal hygrometer. Students chose the tools they needed for their experiments in the in this class, in this classroom. I did a pilot experiment using an empty aluminum can and dry ice. One hour later, I got a lot of drops of dew. I thought the students could get the same result. In the same way as before, this, the students designed Waka waters using GeoGebra. Remarkably, this time it was pretty easy to design and assemble because the students got used to GeoGebra. They experimented according to their plans. Uh, as you can see in the photo on the right, the, the experiment tool students made was amazing. Uh, the, advice, uh, the, uh, the device created a large amount of dew by allowing the aluminum can of dry ice to directly meet the hot air and condensing and gathering the dew in one place. Their creativity and problem solving skills were great. Well, we succeeded in getting large amount of dew, but as you, as you see, in fact, it was not through appropriate technology. We used dry ice and boiling water. Afterwards, students looked into the case of Ethiopia and by analyzing the environmental conditions in the area, we learned why you can be collected only in the natural environment. Uh, through these series of courses, students realize that math and science are the keys to solving problems uh, we are facing now. Mm, I worked on a project to build a large geodesic dome. I'd like to check the temperature and humidity inside and, out, inside and outside by covering the dome surface with vinyl. If the temperature inside the dome is much higher than the outside, the geodesic dome can be used to as a suitable technique. 
the progress, uh, the progress of designing a geodesic dome uh, with GeoGebra is as shown. Interestingly, the dome designed by GeoGebra is exact not the half of a sphere. It is a little bigger than the half. It should be done this way because it is the principle of a geodesic dome that should be applied in order to make it. And assembling a, geo a geodesic dome is so simple because it has the same patterns. Uh, this is a pattern, the same pattern. Assembling a large geodesic dome is simple but not easy because it is about three meters tall. So it is very important to work together. The students help each other well. And finally, they succeeded building a large geodesic dome. It was night, so we decided to cover the dome surface with vinyl the next day. The large geodesic dome was supposed to be in the same place until the next morning. I went inside the dome. Looking out from inside the dome, it was very wonderful. How does it look from inside the dome? Let's watch this video. The moment that we covered the dome surface with vinyl, the wind suddenly blew hard and then our dome collapsed by the wind. We can predict that the inside of the dome covered uh, with vinyl is warmer than the outside of the dome. Hmm, what will happen if you design a large structure using GeoGebra and make it using 4D frame in the real world? Will the structure that is stable in GeoGebra will still be stable in the real world? Hmm, GeoGebra is not under gravity, but the real world is affected by gravity all the time. I wanted to check this myself, so I experimented my, uh, with my students. This is a 10 meter high structure that I designed using GeoGebra. I thought this was pretty stable. The students used my blueprint to develop a strategy for putting this large structure together. Students cut 40 frame. 
we assemble the GeoGebra, uh, we assemble the body frame based on the blueprint. Um, as you can see in the pictures, uh, the structure that I showed you earlier is similar to that one that my students actually built. But the students started to tell me things like this. Teacher, the 40 frame pieces don't fit together well. I thought it was because some lengths of 40 frame cut by the student were wrong. However, this was not their fault. It was because of gravity. As we assembled the 40 frame, the weight increases incre uh, the weight increases and the circumference of the circle also increases than that of the blueprint this was something i had never predict and i found this very interesting i became curious about how to make a tall structure using body frame as a material so I used the 40 frame to a uh, minimum to reduce the weight. And I realized that the closer the ex external shape of the structure is to a straight line, the less stable it is in, it is in the real world. So I designed it in a curved shape. I found that the more flexible and the stronger it is. We got back together and cut the 40 frame and we started putting them together uh, with cable. We tied the points that line segments intersect. By doing so, uh, the cable could hold the structure together. But again, a problem occurred. The four meter high structure collapsed. What was the problem?
As you can see, this structure was very strong. However, in the process of lifting it up and adding another layer on it, there was a problem of collaboration among, stu among students. The students had to lift the structure at the same time and hold it for a long time. And I designed the, the line segment too long without considering how tall they were. So even though the students did their best, it was very hard to add the new layer. It was my fault. So what is the solution to this? According to my analysis, the structure has to be twisted a little bit more and the outer shape has to be smoother. Furthermore, uh, by using two hexapod as one connector to connect tubes, which helps the structure to keep the original shape itself. I will try again uh, next year based on this. This year, the, the COVID-19 situation is too bad to try anymore. Uh, I will introduce my making a catapult project. At first, I showed my students the functioning principle of the catapult through GeoGebra. The students analyzed my GGB file and searched internet resources. They made catapults according to their plans and they used to the catapult they made uh, to play a game of throwing the ball farther and more accurately. I had a fun time with the students. Mm, this is the last thing I'm going to share. I had the most fun doing this project this year. Uh, this project was to making a water cleaning boat. A water cleaning boat collects garbage floating at a lake, uh, on a lake. Uh, this boat has to maintain balance and move forward. What do math and science knowledge do when we make this boat? What laws can may what laws can math play here? This is a complex but very exciting project. We used to the principles of a rubber band plane propeller to move the boat. However, because the propellers are exerting its force counterclockwise only the boat rotates big in one direction. We wanted our boat to move forward. Uh, to do this, we had to think about several things. First, in science class, we taught uh, principles to maintain balance in all four directions and move forward. Second, through math class, we taught uh, principles to calculate the average velocity of the boats my students made. And the students experimented several times with their boats in a small swimming pool installed at school. The students constantly asked and answered each other to find the solutions. In order for the boat to maintain its balance on the world, on the water, it needs uh, the principle of the level. Uh, students studied how to understand it correctly. 
The student chose uh, ex experimental tools and learned basic principles they needed. Mm, each group made their own water cleaning boat. It was impressive that the students made a variety of water cleaning boats. Mm, it's a pig. Uh, these are the water cleaning boats made by students. Mm, did, do, uh, did, these, uh, did these boats move forward on the water? First, uh, the teachers, including myself, experimented with our simple boat. Uh, with a rubber band, a normal boat runs on uh, water uh, like this. Uh, we found a strategy to move forward. We filled one empty bottle with water. Let's see how the boats move. Wow. If you turn the bottle, uh, uh, if you turn the boat upside down, it moves like this. Uh, at the first attempt, uh, all the boats made by my students rotated widely in one direction like this. The students recorded how their boats moved and analyzed it to correct it. Uh, 
What is the problem? This is due to the direction of winding the rubber band. One rubber band was wound clockwise and the other was wound clock, uh, counterclockwise to these students both rotated in, in place. Uh, the process in which uh, students analyze this is very important. Here lies the objective of this project. Now, my students experiment to confirm how much pollutants our student boards can collect. For this, I put some pollutants in a small pool. How many pollutants can be retrieved? Most of the student boards are rotating uh, widely in one direction. It seems that they still haven't found the solution. I did not tell them about the solution that the teachers had found. I wanted them to find it for themselves. Uh, most of students both are rotated big in one direction or rotated in place. It's because the students could not find the solution. Furthermore, repetitive experiments and the friction and uh, friction by the net made the boat disfigure. Then does this look like a successful experiment? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, my students uh, say, oh, uh, but I think uh, it, is, it, it is not because the balance of the boat was lost and the propellers were completely submerged in the water. The friction of the water caused the boat to move in a big circular motion. So, we needed uh, premises for the next experiment or with the students. First, the boat must advance, maintain complete balance. Second, the propellers must not be submerged in the water. And here's the most remarkable water cleaning boat. This boat is different from the rest. What is the difference? They put some net in the middle of the boat. So it minimizes the resistance caused by water. If they had adjust the weight a little bit, uh, they, their boat could have moved forward much more. However, I praised this uh, team for their creativity. They made a nice water cleaning boat. This experience will give these students confidence to solve real world problems in the future. It is time to analyze their experiment is, uh, that is the most important moment in class. 
Now, I will summarize that I've presented today. First, real world problems are not that simple. They cannot be solved with knowledge of a single subject. Second, teachers should not tell the students everything. The students learn from their mistakes. And last, we must provide these experiences to the students constantly. Uh, thank you very much for listening to my presentation for a long time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Young Kyung Kim. I'm really amazed uh, and instead of uh, being uh, without words from the amazement, uh, you provoked a lot of thoughts uh, and uh, you also made me remember uh, to uh, a lot of uh, memories uh, and my own experiences because obviously uh, we walked uh, parallel paths uh, for uh, some uh, experiments, uh, though uh, I also have to admit that I wasn't far as courageous as you've been with your students. And uh, I also couldn't be as systematic as, as you've been uh, in, in, this, in this project. So uh, congratulations. And uh, I think we all can agree uh, that uh, making connection uh, between mathematics learning uh, with real world uh, phenomenon and also adding uh, creativity and arts and uh, all uh, these uh, complex uh, connections uh, can be a desirable goal uh, for every of us because as you also presented uh, your students had their own driving motives and engagement to bring forward uh, your your own ideas and your experiments and somehow this uh, project just uh, started to organize itself on some point but you always been very careful uh, to draw the conclusions and uh, draw uh, the lessons uh, to learn uh, from each um, of these uh, experiments just a little uh, story that uh, among the first times uh, when uh, I uh, created the Varka Water model with my students uh, in Finland, of course, not as impressive and not as a complex way uh, as, as you did, but uh, my students been always excited uh, to try to test it, if it really can collect uh, water. And my idea was that that uh, in many cases uh, 4D frame is more serving like a model uh, to show the structure, but it uh, would be really highly risky that if it really works because of the many reasons uh, what you also introduced us in your presentation. But anyway, uh, I didn't have the heart to stop uh, the children. They just ran out uh, from the classroom and installed uh, their smaller Varka waters uh, outdoors uh, in uh, proper places. And uh, they were really excited to see on the other day if it collected water or not. And it did actually. So <laughs> we've been really, really lucky, I should, I should say. Uh, and uh, it was also a lesson uh, for me uh, that uh, these um, uh, intentions uh, have to be uh, planned and, and supported uh, from the beginning, actually. Another uh, short story that uh, together uh, with uh, uh, Mr. Park, uh, when we wrote a paper for the world largest uh, mathematics and art community for bridges, about uh, Varka water structure and uh, about summer camps and workshops. I was really careful to check uh, this paper with my father-in-law, who's a water engineer and actually one, one of the best water engineers uh, in, in Hungary. And he reminded me that, okay, it can work, but you need to worry about that it, it will work in very special 
climate conditions and this uh, Ethiopian highland is might be uh, one special location uh, when it works excellently but probably it won't work in every uh, places uh, where you just want to install it okay uh, these personal reflections uh, just uh, was uh, uh, some time uh, to give you uh, to think uh, about questions I have uh, uh, very many uh, questions uh, collected already uh, uh, from the chat and also from uh, people uh, who submitted their questions beforehand. But first, I would like to address those who are here in live to please switch in your microphone, switch in your camera if you want. And this is an, a wonderful opportunity uh, to talk uh, personally uh, with, the, with our presenter. So please, questions, comments. Just go ahead. You don't need to have a permission. Just switch in your mic. First comes, first served. If you have no question yet, but you want to say something for the presenter for this occasion, you can also welcome. Okay, you are many here. I won't see everyone's uh, camera. So just go ahead. If you have something to say. Okay, Arnold, you, very much. Be you oh. unmute. Yes, thank you. And uh, I hope uh, we are all fine. Uh, I really enjoyed this because uh, I have had some, some exercises with some learners on how to play around with GeoGebra and also with, um, with 4D frame. I really appreciate what this man did and it's really awesome. Uh, I think we have, we have quite a lot to learn from him. He is really uh, leading in this, in this uh, 4D frame. Uh, I just want to know the, the ages of his learners, uh, which grades were, were these ones, and um, what was their sort of like prior experience as far as 4D frame is concerned, and um, where, where next? like 2024, 2025. Thanks very much. Yeah. Thank uh, you. Uh, you. Uh, uh, okay, so the students are basically ages in ages between 17 to 18 and he uh, he came to the, he came to this idea idea project uh, in order to uh, enhance their ability of cooperation and uh, and problem solving abilities thank you very much uh, let me share you uh, two things, uh, two questions uh, from the chat line. Uh, Ala Erikson and uh, Luis Alenta, uh, they are both interested uh, if um, this presentation material uh, will be shared, maybe in the form of a PDF or a PowerPoint, and if the video will be shared, and also belonging to that, uh, is there any guide uh, for uh, teachers uh, what uh, you could offer uh, in connection with your pro project? Will you summarize uh, somehow maybe in a, in a in a catalog or in a uh, written form uh, also your experiences 혹시 이제 어 이탈리아의 루이자 렌타 선생님이 질문해 주신 내용인데요. 혹시 이제 뭐 이러한 프로젝트를 할수 있는 선생님을 위한 가이드나 이런 것들이 있다면은 이제 좀 공유를 부탁하신다는 내용입니다. 음 제가 특별하게 어떤 만든 가이드라인은 사실 있지 않고 저는 우리 학교에 팀이 있어요. 수학 선생님 두 명과 과학 선생님 두 명의 팀이 있고 
어, 그들 모두가 다 스팀 수업에 관심이 있기 때문에 어, 프로젝트를 진행할 때 있어서 항상 같이 이 협업을 해요. 회의를 하고 책을 책을 통해서 아이템도 찾고 예, 그렇게 해서 진행하고 있어요. Uh, so actually, he doesn't have any written uh, written guide for teachers, but this project is made by a group of not not just by himself, but a group of teachers uh, consisted of two mathematics teachers and two science teachers. So they so uh, so before uh, so in the previous question, he mentioned about uh, making uh, enhancing the ability of uh, co-working and collaborate collaboration. And actually, that applies that that exactly applies exactly the same to the teachers as well. So teachers are doing uh, doing like they need to have, have team projects and they need team spirit as well. So this is how the project is made. Thank you a lot, uh, Von Yang, uh, one of our guests, uh, thinks about how long um, did uh, the Varka Water project, how long time uh, Varka Water project uh, uh, took. During oh. during two years, yeah. During two years, yeah. two years. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Very very impressive. Thank you. Uh, more questions uh, from uh, people who are here and eager to switch in mic and have a little live conversation with our presenter. Okay, again, until uh, someone uh, collect courage, uh, Charlotte Graham ask uh, or comment that uh, very interesting uh, combination with a competitive element for the students and body language and facial expressions uh, showing, also proving that how uh, they were involved in engage, engaged through Okay, other uh, live comments, live questions? So, oh, so is uh, so this is uh, so this is about the uh, Korean system. Uh, it, this is this question is related to the Korean Korean education system. So is it uh, so is was this class possible thanks to the uh, free semester a uh, free semester scheme or uh, this or this uh, could this could uh, can this project can be made in a regular class regular class inside regular class time as well so she's asking about the flexibility of times uh, time spent in this kind of class 네 그래서 학교에서는 이런 프로젝트를 있을 때마다 학생들을 모집을 해요 그래서 정규 수업 시간에 할수 있는 건 아니고 저희도 그냥 일반 고등학교이기 때문에 어 정규 수업 시간에 할수 있는 건 아니고 학생들을 모집을 해서 그 모집한 학생들을 대상으로 뭐 주말이나 아니면 방과 후에 그렇게 진행하고 있습니다. So this uh So uh, Junyang, uh, Junyang, today's presenter, uh, the, the school he's working for is not a some like designated specialized school. It is this just a regular high school. So uh, the, so the class, is, this kind of class does is not taking place during the regular class time. But they uh, he uh, so he accepts volunteers to to be in, so volunteering students to be involved for this uh, this project class. And so they are doing like after time after class or even during the weekend. Thank you very much. Uh, from those questions uh, which were asked even previously, uh, prior, prior to this presentation, uh, there were uh, several questions uh, concerning the combination of hands-on learning and digital modeling. So hands-on modeling and digital modeling that how you combine uh, 
uh, GeoGebra and the uh, 4D frame. Uh, what's your experiences about this in general? And also, uh, how do you suggest to begin uh, with this uh, combination? Okay, so two questions. What's your experiences as a, as, a, as a professional on the field now? How do you feel about this combination? What do you think it's important about? And also, if you would recommend to beginners how to start, uh, what would be your advice? 이제 그가 두 가지인데요. 이제 교육자로서 이제 이러한 뭐랄까 이런 융합 프로그램에 이런 이제 융합과 이제 협력 프로그램에 대한 어떤 생각을 가지고 계시는지 궁금하고요. 또 하나는 이제 정말로 이런 것들을 처음 시작하려는 사람들에게 이제 어떤 해주고 싶은 조언 같은 게 있으신지 여쭤보는 질문입니다. 네, 첫 번째 질문에 대한 거는 어 제가 여기 프레젠테이션에도 말씀을 드렸지만. 아, 학생들이 어떤 주어진 문제를 빨리 푼다고 해서 수학적 사고력이 향상되지 않는다. 그래서 이렇게 복잡하고 현실 문제들을 해결해 보는 경험이 어떤 그들의 어떤 수학적 능력이나 어, 문제 해결 능력을 향상시킬 수 있다. 그리고 두 번째는 어, 제 생각에는 같이 이걸 할수 있는 팀이 필요한 것 같다. 혼자서 하기엔 너무 힘들고 마음이 맞는 선생님들과 함께 so uh, so the answer to the first question is going to be so it, this is about problem solving but uh, the the ability uh, the ability to problem solving but but the, the manner matters uh, so this is not not about pro quickly problem quickly solving the problem this is about uh, this is about going to do to the right way. So what they need to do is to, so what they need to do is to, to achieve a goal, a, a very complicated and realistic goal. So that's, that is what they need. So, um, so and that, uh, that kind of complicated and complex project can actually help more about real, uh, about uh, gaining real ability regarding problem solving. And, and the answer to the second question is, you need to form a team anyway, uh, at least. So you, this, this project is too big and too grand to make, uh, to be done alone. So you need, uh, you need someone who can uh, collaborate all together and make a team, uh, make a team of teachers in order to get uh, in order to make a student and make a group of students that who can collaborate with all uh, with you all together thank you very much uh, this leads uh, to another question uh, coming uh, from um, the participants uh, how do you think about efficacy efficiency efficacy in in, in curriculum because uh, there is uh, certainly a concern if you stop by too long uh, for uh, certain topics, then you miss opportunities uh, to go deep enough in those areas which will be, for example, tested uh, on, on some point and uh, what will uh, also uh, have an impact uh, on the student's future. So uh, how, how can you keep the balance? How did you gain time uh, for uh, these kind of activities uh, in, in the tight uh, curriculum? So, she has a case. Ah, uh, Christoph, I'm sorry, uh, but could you please come again? Uh, I didn't, uh, I didn't catch the last, your last words. I'm sorry. Yes, uh, sorry about that. So I was interested that how uh, you gain time, how he got enough time uh, to realize these activities, and how he made balance between this pressuring curriculum. Uh, what he needed to complete over a limited mm. time and these activities which required a lot of time and a lot of free uh, experimenting how he uh, kept balanced uh. 
그러니까 이제 그리고 또 선생님께서요. 어, 선생님 들리시죠? 네, 네. 아, 선생님이 이제 원래 하셔야 될 정규 교육 과정이나 이런 것이 또 있으시잖아요. 네네. 근데 이런 이제 이것은 말하자면 이제 정규 교육 과정에 굳이 이제 포함되지는 않는 내용인데 이런 것들까지 추가로 준비하시면서 어떻게 시간의 균형을 잘 맞추시면서 맞추시고 또한 이제 정규 교육 과정에서 준, 원래 준비하셔야 할 내용에도 소홀하지 않으면서 어, 이러한 이제 엑스트라 프로젝트까지 이제 진행하셨던 그런 이제 비결이나 비결이나 혹시 방법 이런 것들 있으시다면 궁금하다고 합니다. 어 우리 한국에서는 학생들이 수학을 대부분 싫어해요. 왜 싫어하냐면 수학이 필요 없다고 생각하거든요. 수학이 유용하지 못하다. 그렇게 생각을 해요. 그래서 이 학생들에게 이러한 경험을 주는 것이 필요해요. 그리고 학생들이 대부분 수업을 수학을 공부하는 것에 대해서 힘들어 하거든요. 그래서 학생들이 이러한 경험이 있어야 오히려 수업 시간에 아, 수학이 이래서 필요하구나 라는 인식이 생기기 때문이고 어, 그래서 시간의 밸런스는 사실 제 어떤 자유 시간이 조금 뭐 소모되긴 하지만 약간 중독 같아요 네. 처음 한번 프로젝트 하고 아 이제 힘드니까 그만해야지 하지만 또 어느새 뭔가를 새롭게 준비하고 있어요 네. So actually um... In, unfortunately, actually, in Korea, many students hate mathematics. <laughs> This is fact, anyway. And yeah, but that that is main that the main reason for this is many many students think that mathematics is unnecessary for real life. So what he so what what he was trying to, what his aim was to uh, to let them have experience, let them have experience about the real mathematics using in real life. So, but yeah, this this might be difficult for the uh, when in the beginning, but uh, he's but uh, the eventually he can uh, even eventually he can explain why mathematics is necessary in your real in your real life to all the stu all those participating students. So well, uh, so since since this this kind of project is some some sort of like extracurricular or like extra time project. So this uh, this uh, this means extra work, of course. So he has to sacrifice some of his free time and some some of his uh, some of his like leisure time for leisure. But once he once he have done the project, once he even make make an achievement, it makes uh, it makes him to uh, venture venture into another challenge. So the ch challenge, venture, achievement, and then another and then attempt another challenge, another venturing, and another experience. Of achievements so that is some kind of like addicting so he he felt some some he felt some kind of addict addictiveness in uh, this process so that is how he can do uh, he can do all the regular curriculums and extra curriculum as well thank you very much so we know that uh, korea is a very special place for many many reasons but unfortunately students math attitudes is uh, unfortunately uh, similar in in many other countries as well so it doesn't seem uh, to relate uh, to country uh, but we all uh, need to uh, work about this and and care about this and uh, your project is a great example mm -hmm. to how to uh, make an advantage also from the disadvantage because uh, As we can see that uh, probably um, traditional mathematics education and uh, many ways as mathematics can be teached is not necessarily uh, keeping into account uh, these kind of opportunities with the real world connections. But uh, when you start uh, to focus on it uh, in your systematic way and in your careful way, it can have also a dramatic, positively uh, dramatic effect. And, and we, we should build uh, from these experiences, um, I, I, I think. And when we are talking about uh, uh, STEAM's, um, STEAM, STEAM approach uh, uh, details, uh, we can see that uh, many people are celebrating uh, STEAM and also we are together to uh, celebrate these approaches but on the other hand we can also see uh, criticisms 
uh, against uh, uh, these kind of approaches. There were also there was also one comment or question uh, previously this presentation, which uh, called the attention that uh, the too many engineering stuff and engineering topics in the math class uh, could. Uh, bring the focus away uh, from the sort of real mathematical thinking and, and mathematical problem solving as it is. How do you see uh, this potential conflict that uh, mathematical thinking as an essential uh, activity which is valuable on its own and uh, engineering uh, applications and applied uh, mathematics uh, uh, to gain attention uh, to, to to mathematics. How do you keep the balance? Uh, 우선 뭐, 네, 이제 선생님 처음 답변하셨던 것은 사실 수학 싫어하는 거는 어느 나라나 다 이제 있는 현상이라고 이제 그러면서 이제 이러한 이제 선생님의 수업 모델이나 이런 것들이 다른 나라에도 충분히 잘 적용될 수 있을 거라는 이야기가 나왔었고요. 그 다음에 이번에는 이제 약간 좀 비판적인 시각에서 바라보는 그러한 질문을 이제 받아 받아 보았다고 합니다. 이제 뭐 지금 이제 이게 기본적으로는 수학 교과에 해당이 되는 수업이라고 할 수가 있잖아요. 그런데 이제 이 프로젝트를 쭉 이제 진행하고 그러다 보면 이제 공학적인 요소들도 상당히 이제 가미가 많이 되는 그런 경향이 있는데요. 그러다 보면은 이제 뭐 경계를 허문다라는 측면에 들어갈 수도 있겠지만은 어쩌면은 이제 수학이 이제 수학 시간인데 수학이라는 것의 비중이 지나치게 줄어들고 공학의 비중이 지나치게 뭐야 수학 시간 치고는 공학의 비중이 지나치게 높아지는 그런 현상도 있을 수 있다고 생각을 한다고 합니다 질문자께서요. 그래서 이제 수학과 공학의 비중을 어떻게 잘 조정하고 균형을 맞추시는지에 대해서 선생님께 질문을 드리고자 합니다. 어 먼저 네. 저는 그렇게 생각해요. 수학의 역할을 이해할 필요성이 있다고 보는데 음... 예를 들어서 아인슈타인이 한테 수학이라는 도구를 주지 않았으면 우리의 운명 미래의 운명을 바꾼 뭐 상대성 이론 같은 것도 나올 수가 없었겠죠. 그러니까 수학이라는 도구는 어, 복잡한 세상을 아주 간단하게 정리해주고 그 간단하게 정리한 개념을 어, 그 간단한 정리한 개념을 이용해서 확장시켜줄 수 있는 도구라고 보거든요. 그렇기 때문에 수학을 공부하는 공부해야 되는 이유가 거기서 생기는 것 같아요. 그래서 뭐 수학의 비중이 낮아진다는 것의 의미가 수학 공부를 안 한다는 것이 아니라 수학을 알아야만 우리가 어떤 물리적인 어떤 현상이라든지 이런 걸다 분석할 수 있는 거죠. 그렇기 때문에 우리가 앞으로 사실 모든 현상들이 다 물리적인 거잖아요. 우리가 걷는 거, 뭐 비행기 날아가는 거 이런 모든 것들이 다 물리적인 현상이기 때문에 수학의 역할은 그런 데서 발생하는 것 같습니다. 예. So I, uh, he thinks that we need to understand the role of mathematics first. <laughs> like even even Albert Einstein, Albert Einstein uh, started everything beginning from the math. To that, uh, so okay. So in short, mathematics is about uh, someone summarizing uh, all those complexities and all those complex things, uh, complicated things of the of, of everything around the world. So every so let uh, so we can say that uh, we can sum uh, we can summarize the world and that's mathematics. So start, starting from that basics, uh, we can extend to uh, we can extend our thinking, and that is how the mathematics is get, going to be, be developed. So that is the reason why we start we need to study mathematics. So in the root, so mathematics can be something like a root. Uh, mathematics can be, uh, um, so starting from mathematics, we can analyze everything and we can, uh, and we can uh, experience all those, everything happening, uh, everything happening uh, in terms of like in the perspective of physics as well. So uh, that is what, uh, so that is why he thinks that uh, this project is can lead a, uh, can lead students to gain interest about mathematics. That is why this, what the, uh, that, that is the reason he thinks this class is still about mathematics. Oh, 네, 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 
원, 원래 원래 모든 개념들은 분리되어 있지 않았어요. 우리가 우리가 교육 과정이라는 것에 의해서 분리되어서 배우는 거지. 사실은 모든 우리가 알고 있는 지식들은 통합되어야지 된다고 봐요. 그래야지 좀더 확장을 이룰 수가 있습니다. Uh, so originally, uh, all those uh, all those disciplines were were not divided. Everything was everything was in some sort of thing. And so for the like administrative and those bureaucratic reasons, uh, all those uh, disciplines and those subjects were divided actually. So we need to so uh, in the in the actual learning process, we need to integrate those divided uh, notions and disciplines uh, all together. So that is what he thinks. Thank you very much. I think uh, at this point, it's already too late, but it, at this point, at least, I need to give uh, credit uh, to our wonderful uh, translator here, Sung Wo Lim, who is not in, easy, not in easy situation um, <laughs> between uh, maybe two complex questions, uh, but very compact and dense answers. So thank you very much, uh, Sung Wo Lim, uh, for standing uh, firmly uh, your, your place uh, be between us in the midst uh, of this uh, brainstorm here. And uh, just to ease your situation a bit, uh, there is coming a really, really simple question for you to translate, but probably very difficult question uh, for our presenter uh, okay. from Indonesia. What is STEAM for you? What is STEAM for you? Mm. Mm. Yes, just like Christopher said, easy but difficult question. <웃음> 그냥 수학 교사의 입장에서 본다고 하면은 음, 오히려 학생들이 수학 공부를 할수 있는 이유를 만들어 줄수 있는 수학. So, uh, as a uh, as a perspective of math a mathematics teachers, this is like let letting the steam steam is like letting the students give motivating students to st start studying mathematics. Thank you. So uh, you you see it uh, like a motivational uh, core of of this integration. I agree. 동기부여를 한다는 이들 핵심 요소가 스팀이라고 생각하시는 말씀이시죠? 그렇죠. 네, 그것도 yes, 그렇고, 네, 그리고 네. 음, 정말 학교에서 교사들이 중요하다고 가르치는 지식들이 사실은 완전히 파편적이고 분리되어 있고 그것이 오로지 시험을 위한 것이기 때문에 학생들이 싫어한다. 그런데 이런 스팀 수업 같은 것을 경험해 보면 아, 우리가 왜 이런 걸 배워야 되는지를 알수 있기 때문에 우린 지속적으로 이런 경험들을 제공해 줘야 한다. 그리고 사실 본질적으로 학교의 모습이 PBL 그 프로젝트 베이스드 러닝의 형태로 앞으로 가야 한다. 네, 그렇게 생각해요. So actually we need we have to think does this does the up does the things teacher are teaching which are which are which uh teachers are saying this is important that is important is are they really or are they really the most important thing or uh he can teach so actually uh he doesn't think so that is uh because uh actually those things those like important so-called important things are actually only focused on exams uh, like uh, so many so particular so particularized and divided and, uh, and divided then just focusing on exam and getting higher scores and yeah you can get a plus you can get 100 out of 100 percent 100 so some things of like that so but we need to go back to origin of school and uh, steam uh, steam can tell uh, steam can steam can tell students students why do they need to learn and so I think the I think this depends. This highly depends on experience, giving experience to the students. And so uh, he thinks that the schools schools should be oriented into like project based learning system. 
to uh, to overcome this prob the problem and dilemma the school schools are facing now these days. Thank you very much. Um, Yahi Park uh, has a question to you. Okay. 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 Uh, not to give up uh, so that we, we were able to see how the project went from the beginning to the end. Um, it was really, uh, you know, uh, impressive and also it's uh, such a precious, um, uh, you know, collection of data uh, for, for the any um, preliminary uh, studies, I think. And uh, I was very interested in students' roles and their learning to fulfill their role in their collaborative over the project. And I really think that was a uh, valuable opportunity that uh, all, of, all of the students were able to participate or even observe from uh, planning, uh, planning for the project to analyzing the question. And uh, most of them looked like, uh, you know, particip uh, par participatory uh, collaboration, collaborators, but uh, how you as a teacher uh, would keep supporting an individual to expand their participation to a new project by applying to their previous project-based learning. 네, 그래서 제 질문은요. 네. 어, 아이, 아, 그 학생들이 그 어, 프로젝트를 처음부터 끝까지 다 보고 참여해 본 것이 어, 정말 저는 인상적이었고 또 그게 하나의 큰 자산이 될것 같아요. 그런데 이제 저도 선생님이었던 적이 있어요. 어, 이제 그런 경험들을 또 이제 어떻게 학생들이 또 새로운 어, 과제나 또 새로운 아이디어로 계속 이렇게 확장을 해 가면서 자신의 역할을 또 이렇게 어, 훌륭한 어, 협동, 협업가로서 혹은 또 혹은 리더로서 또 계속 이렇게 확장할 수 있을지 어, 선생님으로서 어떻게 또 계속 이렇게 네, 격려하고 싶은지 알고 싶습니다. 어... 일단 지금 현재 우리가 사는 세상은 지식은 이미 넘치도록 어, 이미 널려 있고 웹상에 널려 있고 그것을 어떻게 조직화해서 창의적인 무언가를 만들어내느냐의 싸움이 될것 같은데 학교에서의 이러한 경험들 그러니까 공부를 잘하는 학생이 실제로 훌륭한 리더가 될수 있는 건 아니잖아요. 그래서 학생들이 이렇게 어, 같이 이런 프로젝트에서 자기, 자기 것도 양보하고 자기 의견을 조율해서 또 다른 어떠한 산출물을 만들어내고 이러한 과정들을 이제 지속적으로 경험한 학생들은 어, 이렇게 불확실성이 완전히 지배하는 이 세상에서 그래도 분명히 뭔가 해결책이나 돌파구를 만들 수 있는 능력이 어, 어, 생겼을 거라고 봐요. 네. 네 그래요. <웃음> so actually in uh, actually nowadays knowledge is everywhere actually. You can search anything on the web. Anything on you can google everything. But the problem the real problem for the world now is to organize something and to organize those knowledges and to make something creative out of those about those wave of knowledges so you uh one uh anyone uh any, a student doesn't have to study that or study well to do, uh, does uh, it is not necessary to study well to do great things uh, that's something different so uh, what? Uh, so something. The uh, so these days, students. Uh, what they need. What they really need is real life experience. So, when, uh, if a student ha st earns a lot of real life related experience during his school time, his or her school time, and that person can uh, that can, that person can solve real problems even if, even the, uh, even after leaving school, if after graduation. Uh, they can adapt to uh, adapt to go on and live on to the real life. So that's 
So that's uh, that is the ability he wants to let every let every let all of his students should earn. Thank you very much. Uh, we have a question from Japan uh, concerning again uh, steam and steam in Korea. So what's uh, the main uh, concept behind introducing steam in Korea on the elementary level and in junior high school and high school? So do you see any difference uh, between the role of steam uh, on, on introduced on these levels in Korea? 네, 일본에서 들어온 질문인데요. 한국에서의 스팀 교육의 개념에 관해서 이제 정, 정확히는 학교 급에 관해서 이제 물어보고 있습니다. 어, 초등학교랑 중학교, 중학교 그리고 고등학교에서 스테, 스팀 교육의 역할이 어떻게 각각 다를 다른지 아니면 대동소이한지 이런 이제 세부적인 내용에 관해서 이제 선생님께 질문 드리고자 합니다. 어, 스팀이 지향하는 목표는 똑같을 것 같아요. 그런데 그 스팀 안에 녹아 있는 교과의 깊이가 조금 다를 것 같아요. 초등학교는 아무래도 깊이 있는 어떤 과목들을 다룰 수는 없잖아요. 근데 고등학교 오면 뭐 미적분도 배우고 확률의 개념도 배우기 때문에 학생들이 다룰 수 있는 어떤 그 주제의 폭이 넓어지는 것 같습니다. So STEAM, uh, STEAM education basically have all same, uh, basically has same goals in all levels. But the difference is how deep that they, how deep can they go actually? So for the elementary school students, it is it is too difficult to teach uh, something which which can be learned in high school. So in that way, so the the only, the only difference can be the the level and how deep that they, how far they can go all together. I I, I think uh, most of uh, most of other elements can uh, can be same. Thank you very much. Uh, there was a question uh, from India uh, that, uh, yeah, you, you already told your position uh, about combining uh, different subject knowledge and integration. We already heard and seen uh, your, uh, your support uh, for that. But was there any surprise uh, made for your students that how your students thought uh, about this integration were they surprised did they feel comfortable uh, to link uh, these many things how did they react it uh, this is the question from india 어 사실 이제 선생님께 인도에서 들어온 질문인데요. 사실 이제 선생님께서 하시는 게 이제 여러 가지 과목이나 이제 경계를 굉장히 허물고 이렇게 융합하고 합치는 그러니까 쉽게 말해서 합치는 뭔가를 합치는 유의 그런 이제 수업 내용들이 굉장히 많으십니다. 그런 것에 대해서 혹시 학생들의 이제 어떤 어떤 생각 가지고 있는지 혹시 알려주실 수 있으실까요? 예를 들면 이제 뭐, 뭐 어떤 이런 이제 융합적인 과정을 하면서 뭔가 이렇게 새로운 것을 깨달아서 놀랐다든가 또는 이제 이게 둘이 합쳐질 수 있구나 하는 새로운 깨달음을 얻었다든가 혹시 이런 유의 내용이 있다면 학생들의 반응이 되게 궁금한 것 같습니다. 음 일단 학생들의 반응은 아까도 말씀드렸듯이. 어, 시키지도 않았는데 계속해서 저희가 어떤 이런 프로젝트를 열고 학생들을 모집하면 했던 학생들이 또 신청하는 거 그것만 봐도 아, 이, 그냥 이, 이거 자체가 재밌다. 그러니까 이게 뭐 현실적으로 대학 입학과 물론 도움이 될 수도 있겠지만 그냥 이 자체가 이일 자체가 재밌는 일이다라는 인식이 있는 것 같고요. 제 생각에는. 그리고 두 번째는 아, 수학은 쓸모 있구나. 그걸로 다 설명할 수 있을 것 같은데 어, 수학 생각보다 쓸모 있는 과목이네 네, 라는 생각. So, um, so many students are do, many students are subscribing and admit uh, and they are applying to his class even if they they were not told to do so to do so. So they they do that they they voluntarily join the class even if in even if it's in extra time and on even on weekends. So what they find is that, oh, this is fun. Oh, this is great. Oh, I love it. On their own. They're thinking it, thinking like, thinking like that on their own, not because they are forced by it, forced by adults to do so. And so this, uh, oh, this is everything fun. And this is, uh, I think that's the strength of the project-based learning. And the another, another thing is that all the students are realizing that this, oh, mathematics is fun. 
I don't uh, I don't need get I don't uh, I I'll do that even if my I mean my parents my teachers don't need to uh, are not telling me to do so. So that's uh, that's the point of the his project based mm -hmm. learning system. Thank you, thank you a lot. Actually, um, here we have a lot of teachers uh, with us. That's not not only you, Yun. Uh, that's a good news. I think that. Uh, uh, teachers are interested uh, in each other's uh, practices and uh, this is also an important way forward uh, what you are doing to share you know, your experiences with other teachers and let's hope that uh, these other teachers get inspired uh, by and that we can see already from the chat line and uh, from the reactions that they are excited and I'm sure uh, that uh, your presentation will lead uh, to many local actions uh, here and there and uh, people got uh, uh, courage uh, uh, from you and uh, we have also uh, researchers here and also teacher educators here so uh, I, I'm sure that many parents uh, are here and we all are children or have been once children so i think all all parties all actors of the story uh, are really represented uh, today uh, and um, that's uh, that's uh, also uh, important uh, i i think uh, uh, professional development uh, for teachers actually in indonesia uh, there are uh, fantastic uh, programs uh, running by saumao uh, institutes, uh, the, their representants are also uh, with us uh, today. So also regional uh, cooperation uh, certainly uh, will be possible uh, based on these meetings. And um, there was one uh, question uh, from, a, from a teacher uh, from Italy, who is a very important networker in Italy. She was uh, also connected uh, teachers uh, during the hardest time in the Italian pandemic uh, when uh, this was uh, the first city, Luis Alenta's uh, city, Codogno, was one of the first which was locked down and it was in the red zone and uh, Luisa uh, then switched online and uh, started to support uh, fellow teachers uh, online and uh, she's with us uh, today uh, as well. Greetings, Luisa. And uh, she just asked me to ask you that, uh, what do you think about the reasons uh, for why math is not loved in Korea? What's the Korean student's excuse against math? Because Luisa certainly knows uh, about Italian excuse, I know Hungarian and some Finnish excuse, but what do you heard about uh, Korean excuses against math? 네, 이번 질문은 이탈리아에 있는 루이자 렌타 선생님이 어, 질문해 주셨는데요. 사실 세계 여러 나라에는 이제 학생들이 다 수학을 싫어하는 이유가 있습니다. 뭐 이탈리아 학생들이 수학 싫어하는 이유도 있고 뭐 헝가리 학생들이 수학을 싫어하는 이유도 있고 그런데 어, 선생님께서 생각하시기에 한국 학생들이 수학을 싫어하는 특별히 이유가 특별히 있다면 그거 혹시 뭐라고 생각하시나요? 어, 그 이건 제가 확실하게 얘기할 수 있는데 시험 때문이에요. 그러니까 시험이라는 것이 지필 시험. 대학을 가기 위해 공부해야 하는 수학. 그것이 원래 제가 생각했을 때 원래 인간은 배우는 걸 좋아해요. 네, 뭐든지 새롭게 배우는 걸 좋아해요. 그런데 시험이라는 도구가 이 학생들의 배움을 막는 거예요. 이건 시험에 나오니까 공부하고 이건 시험에 안 나오니까 공부 안 해. 네, 이러한 인식들이 생기게 되면 이 학생들은 어, 내가 왜 공부하고 공부하지 말아야 되는지가 시험에 나오고 안 나오고에 의해 결정이 되는 거죠. 네, 근데 사실은 인간은 원래 제 딸이나 뭐 누구나 모두나 다 새롭게 배우는 거 좋아하거든요. 그러니까 우리는 그것에 본질적으로 학생들이 그 배움의 즐거움을 느낄 수 있게 만들어 주는 게 우리의 역할인 것 같아요. 네, 그러, 그러다 보면 자연스럽게 학생들이 다시 수학을 좋아하게 되지 않을까. 네, 근데 그걸 전 충분히 지금까지 경험했거든요. 그렇습니다. So uh, the one, the, the main reason is for surely the main reason is exams. 
Koreans or Korean students hate mathematics because of exams, uh, like read those written exams and the uh, and university entrance exams. All those endless exams make Korean Korean students hate mathematics. Actually, not just mathematics, but everything. <laughs> Everything is affected by exam. <laughs> so uh, basically, all human beings like how like learning new things. So if they they love to learn new things, but exams uh, exams uh, prevent them to do so. Actually, so um, when when it comes uh, when it comes to when it comes when the learning becomes a tool for exam tool for better getting higher scores in exam. And that make every student uh, focusing just on exams, not uh, focusing on the learning itself. So actually, so that is the trend. Some, some like something like uh, trans. Uh, so this is some like out focusing everyone. So uh, out focusing not learning but the exam itself. So his goal is to let them like learning again, especially in terms of <laughs> mathematics, <laughs> like like they originally were, were like they originally were. <laughs> so okay. that is his goal. <laughs> that uh, sounds clear and a clear message. And uh, I have to say that um, children around the world are sharing uh, concerns of Korean children <laughs> about uh, the connection, bad connection uh, between learning and the exams. And um, actually, I also needed to come to Finland uh, to learn a new perspective about exam and examination. I should become an adult and uh, like a research uh, researcher of education in Finland to understand in a Finnish language course, which I took, that the function of exam is not uh, to punish uh, the student and not uh, to make a bad day uh, or not uh, to checking uh, carefully what you don't know, but to check uh, that agreement what we made uh, as a teacher and student between us, that how effective we are in fulfilling or ag agreement about our learning goals and should we change something together or not. And this was the function of exam in my language course. And it was a revelative uh, moment. But uh, now we are heading uh, towards uh, closing uh, this session. There were some uh, exciting uh, questions also uh, about uh, future technologies or not future, but today's technologies like using AI in the classroom. Uh, do you have uh, anything to say just in half minute? What's your position about using, for example, AI in classroom half minute for this very challenging uh, question? Okay, yes or no? <laughs> AI. <laughs> AI를 이제 어떻게 적용하는지에 관해 AI를 이제 선생님이 이제 수업에서 어떻게 적용하고 계시는지에 관해서 질문입니다. 네, AI를 아 그러니까 AI 수업 중에 지, 지금 질문 끝인가요? 네, 네, AI를 이제 어떻게 적용을 하고 계시는지요? 아 사실은 AI를 수업 중에 이렇게 활용하고 있는 그런 상황은 현재는 아니에요. 왜냐하면 어 우리나라 교육과정 자체가 근데 그거를 이렇게 AI와 관련돼서 할수 있는 건 아직까지는 없는데 어 그래도 일부에서 우리나라의 일부에서는 코딩 수업을 굉장히 어 많이 하, 하고 있어요. 그래서 사실 알고리즘도 굉장히 수학적인 내용이기 때문에 관심은 있지만 아직 해보진 못했습니다. 네. Uh, actually, not really, because uh, because in Korean uh, in Korean regular curriculum uh, in Korean regular education curriculum, uh, AI is not generally included in those uh, timeline. So mainly, uh, nothing. Uh, actually, we don't have many things to do with AI. But some, but some teachers are applying. Like they can teach coding and some even algorithm, which is closely related to mathematics. But not for now, actually. <laughs> Thank you very much. So uh, we are reaching uh, to conclude uh, this event. Um, you can also recognize that as an award winner uh, teacher, you will be asked also to form opinion uh, about many things, probably about everything, eating, fashion, 
and so on. Uh, but uh, you you must uh, be careful uh, to uh, answer uh, these 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 questions in the in the future. And uh, we will be very happy uh, to learn you more. So I really hope uh, that we will have the opportunity uh, to meet you uh, in in many uh, upcoming events. Uh, and let's keep in touch and let's keep sharing uh, these wonderful uh, results and uh, motivate uh, each other in the field. And uh, to uh, close uh, this meeting, uh, I should announce uh, that, um, okay, I wanted to <laughs> uh, show some pictures, which I cannot uh, for some reason, but uh, the next event will take place on the 29th of December. And uh, <sighs> You can follow in the chat line, I put a link uh, for the International Society for the Advancement of STEAM, uh, where you will get the exact information how and where uh, you can uh, register uh, to this event. And in the next event, Philip Longchamps uh, from Sweden and Canada, uh, but mainly from Sweden, actually he's the Teacher of the Year uh, in Sweden and Charlotte Graham uh, was also with us uh, today. Uh, so uh, they are wonderful uh, pioneers of STEAM learning in the Nordic uh, countries. So Philip uh, will share his experiences with us together with Rocky Bion, who is from Korea and uh, actually an internationally ac acknowledged uh, known uh, uh, person uh, who knows a lot about how to balance different things. So he's a natural born uh, physic, phys physics physicist, if I, if I may say so. Uh, all uh, his um, uh, uh, productions are very attractive and can make you a lot of questions also about STEAM uh, learning and also philosophy, if you want uh, to, to how to put things balance also in your life more generally. So I'm really looking forward uh, this session about the innovative learning and also uh, gaining attraction, attention uh, towards uh, science also through TV shows and uh, those venues where Rocky Bion uh, made uh, uh, Korea uh, really uh, famous and, and represented all over the world. So welcome back on the uh, 29th of December. Uh, I really enjoyed uh, to meet with you today. Thank you for the lot of questions and uh, the conversation. And once again, uh, congratulations uh, for this award. We need more recognition to these fantastic projects all over the world. So we uh, hope that we can uh, do our job uh, in this regard. So please check out the chat line. You will find the link there. And I wish you a wonderful night, uh, day, morning, whatever you have at the moment around the globe. Thank you very much. See you soon. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. 네, 네, 네. 멋져, 네. 준영쌤. 아, 감사합니다. 아, 네. 네. 크리스토프 화이팅. <웃음> Thank you, Christo, for today's session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 감사합니다. 선생님, 이거 유튜브 올라간다니, 유튜브. 유튜브 올라간다니. 감사합니다. There will be a YouTube live streaming, the live streaming on the 29th of December for this event as well. Amazing. Thank you so much, Thank everyone, you. for joining Thank us you. today. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.